Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to New Brick Workshop. This is the second of two videos that I'm making about e-bikes. In the first video, I would have told you what an e-bike is. In this video, I'm going to describe the selection process and give you an insight into my decision to buy the particular e-bikes that my wife and I enjoy. Now, the bikes that my wife and I have chosen are made by Royal Dutch Gazelle. And the reason we went for those is that eight years ago, when we were cycling around Europe on our old English bikes, I was getting awful trouble with my wrists because of the position that I was sitting and leaning down onto the handlebars. And some people on the campsite said, well, why don't you try riding my bicycle? He was a Dutchman and he had a Dutch bicycle. And the Dutch bicycles are built for comfort. And once I had a ride on a Dutch bike, I was absolutely smitten. And so we ordered a pair of Dutch bicycles and we've been using ordinary Dutch bicycles since then. Now, last year, we decided that we would move to an e-bike and it was a natural progression for us to choose e-bikes from the same company. However, we did do our market research. We looked at many of the makes available, both in the UK and in Europe, and we ended up making a completely fresh decision that the Royal Dutch Gazelle was the right company to go for. Now, I'd like to make one thing crystal clear. At no stage in the making of this video have we received any help from any cycle company, and not even Royal Dutch Gazelle. We paid the full price for our bicycles from a dealer in the Netherlands. Now, as well as describing what an e-bike uh, is, uh, in video one, really, I gave you some pointers. And if you're going to be looking to buy an e-bike, you need to. First of all, think about the type of cycling you do now and the type of cycling you aspire to do once you get uh, your e-bike. And remember, uh, not all cycling is going to be easy, particularly if you live in parts of uh, the world where you have some hills around you. And if you're going to commute to work on a bicycle, then the last thing you want to do is to arrive sweaty and tired. Now, the Dutch have an expression which is, dress for your destination, not for your journey. And I've heard that said many times when I've been travelling throughout Holland. Now, my own experience in the United Kingdom is that hills present hazards. Uh, and it's because on an ordinary bicycle, you're going so much slower and the traffic is getting so much more frustrated as it tries to overtake you and so on. Uh, but with an e-bike, you can go just that little bit faster. It's slightly less effort uh, and you feel safer and more comfortable in amongst the traffic. Start saving at an early stage because e-bikes are not cheap. And do your own research. Use the internet. Go to dealers that stock e-bikes. Uh, make sure you get a test ride on more than one uh, type or layout of e-bike. And if it's really possible, uh, go to the Netherlands and go to one of the e-bike experience centres, as I did when I went to the Gazelle Experience Centre in Valwijk. And please forgive me if I got the pronunciation wrong again. Well, we're now inside uh, the Gazelle e-bike experience centre in Valvik. And here I've got Gwen, who's the manager. Gwen? Hi. Hi, nice to meet you, Pete. It's good to meet you too. And thank you very much uh, for looking after me today and showing us all the many e-bikes you've got here. Now, just how many have you got? If we count all the e-bikes together, so uh, which are on display and also the test, we are around uh, 175 e-bikes. That's 175 different bikes. Yes. And what is the idea of the e-bike experience center? Do people have to pay to come here? No, they can uh, come here free. It's the, the mission of the experience center is to uh, advise people around uh, the e-bike, uh, what are their needs and what can we do so... Um, we can make the perfect e-bike for the person. So, so really, anybody could come here, even someone from England or from yes. Germany yes. or wherever, and it's free of charge, there's plenty of parking. Yes. Uh, and they can come in. And can they actually ride a bicycle here? Yeah, all the bikes we have here on display, they can also uh, ride. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Now, actually, I've got a little bit of an insight here because when I bought uh, the e-bikes that my wife and I use. We came here a year ago and we played around with all sorts of bikes in order to make our decision. And that was very important to us. 
when someone comes here, do you give them the heavy sales pitch that, oh, you must buy this or you must buy that or here's the order form, please sign here? No, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, we don't sell any bikes here. Uh, our role is to advise. We want to get a clear view of the person and what are their needs. And then we're going to see uh, which e-bike from Gazelle is the best for them. And the whole thing about Dutch bikes in general uh, is that uh, you are adopting a much more comfortable riding position. They're designed for comfort. You're sitting up, uh, you're a little bit higher, uh, you feel as though you're in control more because you're, uh, you've got a better panoramic view of what's going on around you. Now, in, in many respects, a lot of the uh, various factors that I took into account when uh, we were choosing our e-bikes, um, they're a bit subjective. They, they are based on what I discovered on the internet and what my wife and I discussed when we were looking at brochures and so on and so forth. But without any shadow of a doubt, uh, in my mind, the very best motor that uh, we could afford that was on the market was the mid-mounted Bosch motor. Uh, and it was crystal clear to me that Bosch had been in the business for a long time. They'd put a lot of research into their cycle technology and we were going for a pretty safe bet going for Bosch. And so that was the decision that we made. When it came to battery, well, there were three batteries, 300, 400 and 500 uh, watt batteries. And the difference between the three was basically the range that you could go. Uh, the lower capacity battery would have probably done for us. Um, the top of the range one was quite a little bit more expensive. And so we went for the compromise of the middle range battery, which was the 400. Now, we arranged to go to Valvec and uh, look at uh, the bikes before we actually made our decision. And we were going on an ordinary cycling holiday uh, in the Netherlands and decided to go via the Gazelle e-bike experience center in Valvec. When we arrived there, we both thought we knew which particular Gazelle bike we wanted. Uh, they weren't the same. Uh, my wife wanted one, I wanted another. Uh, after probably about three hours of trying all sorts of bicycles at the Experience Centre, we both chose something completely different. My wife went for what has become uh, the most popular e-bike in the Netherlands, probably the most popular e-bike in Europe, uh, which was a seven-speed Gazelle uh, model, uh, which uh, was therefore uh, not as expensive as her original choice. Uh, I went for also a slightly cheaper one. This particular bicycle that I chose uh, had an 8-speed uh, gearbox in it. And it had the slightly upmarket Nyon computer system, which gave you navigation as well. Having navigation uh, wasn't a factor at the time because we had a little handheld Garmin and I could have mounted that on the bicycle perfectly well. However, uh, in retrospect, I'm so glad that we have got it because uh, the number of times we've been cycling both in England and on the continent uh, where uh, you actually didn't quite know uh, the best route to take, well, the Nyon actually has uh, cycle routes built into it and uh, recommended cycle routes at that. Now, the, the reason I changed my mind about the model that I wanted was that the original model I was going to go for had an automatic uh, gearbox. In other words, you uh, just went pedaling along and it changed gear for you uh, to match the uh, amount of effort you're having to put in and so on and so forth. It still had the Bosch motor, but its actual gearbox was electronically controlled. And I asked the question, well, what happens if you run out of power? You've used all your juice and your battery. What then happens? And the, the upshot was that whichever gear you were in when you lost power, is the gear you're in until you regain power again. So if you're on a long cycle ride and uh, you run out of juice, uh, then you, if you're in gear eight, uh, you're in gear eight till you get back home again. And I didn't think that was a particularly good idea. So having made our choice at the Experience Center in Valvik, uh, we then telephoned uh, the dealer who we thought would give us the best price and uh, asked them to uh, have two bicycles prepared for us. And by the end of our two-week holiday, we were able to pick up 
our brand new e-bikes and bring them home with us. Now, I said at the beginning that we've paid the full price for our bicycles. Okay, we've got a small discount, but that discount was based on bargaining power. We were buying two bicycles at the time based on nothing else whatsoever. Uh, and uh, so at no stage have we had any benefit uh, from Gazelle or anybody else uh, in relation to the fact that I'm making this video. But when I decided to make the video probably about six months ago, um, I uh, spoke to Gazelle and I said, look, um, we would like to go back to your um, experience center in Valwick and uh, do some filming. Would that be okay? They said, yes, of course. And so I'm very grateful to Gazelle for uh, giving us permission to do that. And then on top of that, I was very cheeky. I said, look, um, we'll, we're going to be at a campsite not so very far away from your uh, factory. Could we come on a visit? And we were lucky enough to be included on one of the visits that they, they run from time to time. And it was absolutely brilliant. I, I can't tell you uh, how impressive it was. I've visited production lines of various types in, in the past. Uh, I've been to engineering works and so on and so forth. And I think that if ever you're able to go on a, a visit to a cycle factory, then you must do so. Absolutely amazing. And the attention to detail that Gazelle showed was uh, second to none. So the key points that uh, we decided were essential in whatever bicycle we were going to buy was mid-mounted Bosch motor. Uh, the middle range battery was the second thing. Uh, the controller at the time that we bought our bikes was uh, not a big issue. We'd take whichever controller came with the bikes. But now in retrospect, uh, the fact that I've got that Nyon, the one with the navigation system, uh, is really, really good. However, since buying our bikes 18 months ago, I note that Bosch now have a new system and it's designed to go with an iPhone. And basically, you can have any uh, Bosch controller on your e-bike and you then take that off and put it to one side. Then you just put this little gadget which holds your iPhone uh, on the handlebars, holds it perfectly safely, and it then provides you every function that you could possibly dream of, including navigation. And that's called Kobi, C-O-B-I. We really, really like the posture that one sits on a Dutch framed bicycle, and the Gazelle bikes are second to none for comfort. We've got the sealed gearbox, so there's less maintenance. We've got the enclosed chain, so there's less maintenance and no cycle clips. Now, I did say in the first video that you should go for a really good actual bicycle underneath all the electronic stuff. And that really is important because the cost of the electronics, the battery and so on, is such that you want this outfit to last a very long time. And, and finally, serviceability. All of the components that are on our bikes are pretty standard, uh, really across the, the whole industry. The Shimano gears, the hydraulic brakes, uh, and uh, all of the Bosch kit, so on and so forth. It's pretty common now, and even in the UK, it's not difficult to find a dealer who'll be able to maintain a bicycle like this for you. Now, should you be in the Netherlands and you decide you want to buy uh, an e-bike, uh, we bought ours in a town called Arsen, and uh, the company was called Lemon Twee Wheelers. Now, having e-bikes has really transformed our approach to cycling. We still go on our cycling holidays in the Netherlands whenever we can, uh, but we do a lot more cycling here in the UK. Uh, and the reason for that is we don't feel that we're quite the hazard in traffic as we were before. Uh, we can now uh, go at a, a more sensible speed. You still have to work at it, if, even with an e-bike. It's, it's not a question of just pressing the throttle and off you go. You do have to pedal. And so you will be um, contributing to your fitness, particularly if, like us, you start going on longer and longer cycle rides because you've got an e-bike. And part of our market research was talking to Dutch people. They virtually all speak perfect English. And all the time that we were cycling around on our ordinary bikes, every now and again we'd stop for coffee and be chatting to the people who've just ridden in on their really super duper e-bikes. And we've said to them, you know, what, what do you think and uh, what would you recommend? Uh, and that's how we ended up having this firm conclusion that the Bosch mid-motor was important. And, and doing face-to-face -face, uh, research like that is very useful. Go to, go to dealers, ask them, try as many different configurations of e-bike that you can. There are some very good dealers in the UK who will let you ride 
uh, bicycles without any commitment and, and really make up your own mind and, and just make sure, because it's such a big investment, just make sure you're absolutely convinced it's the right style of bicycle for you. If you have the opportunity to go to an e-bike experience centre like that, which is run by Gazelle, then go for it because it's really, really worth it. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>